Good evening friends. SSIS is often used as an ETL source for loading, extra extracting, transforming and loading data uh, from different uh, sources or locations like flat files, SAPs, systems, DB2 uh, and we often tend to load or stage data and then pr uh, transform it and, and then load. So in an ideal uh, situation considering there is a very vast amount of data which needs to be loaded into our tables, uh, SQL Server tables uh, if you have 10 or 15 tables warehousing around uh, 100 million of records each it would be the SSIS package uh, the staging job of, for the SSIS package or the task would itself take around 2 hours 2 to 3 hours on an average I am presenting a very hypothetical scenario now consider once this data has been staged uh, and while the transformation of the data uh, and the loading to the data of the main table is in process there is some glitch in one of the tables and the entire SSIS package fails. So the, run, the rerun cost for this SSIS package would be huge. In terms you would, uh, you would again have to spend uh, minimum time for loading the st or staging the complete data into your uh, warehouse. Uh, you would want to restart the package from where you have actually left or where the glitch actually occurred. So uh, you would want to have a restart scenario where you are able to load the date, uh, load the package from where the execution error occurred. So uh, this is what this blog is all about. I am going to introduce you to checkpoints in SSIS. How you, uh, how SSIS offers you to provide checkpoints and restart your package from the point of failure. So what we are looking at is a very hypothetical yet uh, a very realistic scenario. Uh, which is we are trying to load data from a flat file we have a flat file of, uh, of employees uh, containing employees data uh, in this folder it is called stage underscore AMP uh, text which has uh, seven records for employee of different departments and it has the salary now what I have them have in my package is first I would try to clean up my staging table uh, which is if the table exists we would drop the table this is the code for for building the staging table and then we would load the data from this flat file into the staging table from the first ETL job so uh, DFT uh, task so we have this flat file source and, and it is going to be loaded into our uh, stage IT employee table for all the IT employees next is the main table building main, main table. The, the main table schema or, or the IT employee table schema is slightly different from the staging table. We have an additional column which is salary bracket uh, which is added for the employee. It flags, uh, uh, flags the salary of each of the employees uh, on high, low and medium with, with uh, a case uh, or a condition where the salary is less than 5000 people are flagged for low salary and then 5 to 7000 medium and then uh, uh, greater than 7000 is high salaries so we are going to work with this example uh, and then we are going to use the staging table stage I IT employee table uh, for all the IT employees the where condition of the filter criteria is, is the department for each of the employees should be IT and then we are going to process and put them into our main table so if you look at the source query for this uh, data flow task it, it looks like something uh, here and then the load of the destination it's for the IT employee that's all next we move on at the last is this cleanup stage where we have where we'll be cleaning up the stage IT employee table uh, let's run this package first
right the package has executed successfully now if you look at our IT employee table it has all the employee details of the IT employees and also the salary bracket is calculated let's also take a look at the staging table alright we have actually cleaned up the table uh, at, at our cleanup stage so that's fine um, now using this same scenario consider after the load stage of this table considering that we have not 7 records but 700,000 records to be loaded into, into this table and then processed into the IT employee table in such scenario uh, if your package fails at any of these stages in, in the main table you would again have to uh, take the pain of loading the entire flat file records into your load stage uh, or reprocess them into staging table which is not actually required logically you would not want to load because the load task has executed successfully uh, now let's work up with this example and how we can implement checkpoints in SSIS and how we can actually get this package to run from the point of its failure so the first three properties click anywhere on, on, on your package go for properties and you'll see the three properties here the first is checkpoint file name which means you would need to provide an XML file uh, for configuring your checkpoints. Let, let's call it checkpoint.xml. We have added a checkpoint a file. Now the next uh, property that you would need to set is checkpoint usage. By default it's, it's configured to never. The other two options that you have is, is effect if exists and always which means it is that your SSIS package is going to use the checkpoint uh, file if it exists if we use the if exist option and always it's it's going to uh, the always option will always look for a file checkpoint file for for writing or, or for using uh, for running your package so if you use the always option your package would not run uh, it would not even start uh, you know if we do not have the check uh, the checkpoint file there so Ideally, you should use if exist option, and let's use that. The last option is save uh, save checkpoints, uh, which means that we have configured the file, we have configured the usage, and last you would have is to enable your checkpoints. Let's enable it to true. So that's configuring your checkpoints. Now, for the tasks that you have that you want the restart to happen, consider checkpoints is a costly operation. Do not implement on any and every uh, tasks that you have. Now, if I want, you know, to configure checkpoints, I should not use load stage D uh, DFT because, in any case, if this task, if this package fails in the load stage, I would need to load the data either ways. So it's not required for me to restart the package from here. So I can, I should consider restarting my package in case of failure if it fails on the main table processing. So let's consider to click on the main table the data flow task and go on the properties. The properties that you would need to configure here is fail package execution. So if your package fails here, fail package on failure, we should set it to true. That means we are uh, using this task for checkpointing uh, uh, and auditing the success and the failure of this task. So we have enabled it. For all the tasks that you would want the checkpoints to happen, do consider enabling this option. So we are all set with checkpoints. Now let's run this package and, and deliberately try to fail this package in the load main table uh, data flow. So what I do here is I simply rename this destination table which would not be there. And now let me try to run this package rightly so, so the package has failed at the main table load now let's go back and look at the checkpoint file if we open this checkpoint XML what we would see is all the tasks that have completed successfully here uh, will be recorded in this XML file 
so it would keep a track of the variables it would keep a track of of all the data flow tasks or, or all the tasks which are uh, which have completed successfully so this is the content of your uh, checkpoint file I could explain it but uh, considering this is a quick introduction I would skip the explanation for uh, the checkpoints uh, XML file please consider referring uh, the MSDNs for, for the detailed explanation on, on uh, the checkpoints XML file now let's rectify the table that we have here I have rectified this table name and let's try to run at this stage we should be having our staging table we have we do have our staging table currently built since the package failed abruptly in between so uh, let's try to rerun this package this package should start running from the main table data flow task because it's going to refer the XML checkpoint XML rightly so and now if you try to query the staging table would be gone and your IT employee table is being uh, has been built uh, correctly so this was a quick introduction for checkpoints although uh, personally I would not advise uh, I would advise custom uh, custom codes for restarting your packages if you want it in between checkpoints have certain drawbacks which I would like to uh, iterate before I leave you here for for example the first uh, problem with checkpoints is the for loops for each file loops such loops can uh, are not tracked through checkpoints so so either ways even if we enable the checkpoints uh, they would be run either ways uh, over again even if your package has been uh, you know the, the task has failed or not failed it would be rerun again also the parallel tasks if we have in, in the sequence container they would be run again because SQL Server is unable to audit them into the checkpoint file correctly uh, the third point being variable of type objects are never uh, cannot be audited uh, in checkpoints so your audio ADO enumerator is, is rendered helpless here it's actually uh, not able to leverage the checkpoints functionality and also uh, some of the scenarios where event handlers uh, have been implemented uh, they are com completely go out of place if you have checkpoints enabled and they do not perform correctly so what I mean here is there are a couple of scenarios where checkpoints would not perform correctly uh, when you have ideal data data loads uh, with a very simplified uh, uh, SSIS package being, build, being built consider using checkpoints and uh, in complicated scenarios where you have parallel tasks for loops for each loops uh, sequence containers and also object types ADO enumerator you uh, your checkpoints will be rendered helpless uh, so that was a quick demonstration for checkpoints in SSIS for you guys I hope it's it's helpful to you thank you